You can see I've got my 560 SEC back up on the lift, and it's time to change the accumulators for the hydraulic rear suspension, known as the SLS. If you've watched my other videos on the SLS system, you recall earlier on I had a test drive in the SEC here, and it wasn't performing that well. There was some stiffness in the rear end, a little bit of rear sag, so I decided to go after the system. Now, there are no leaks. The hydraulic struts look just fine. Now, this is what the hydraulic strut looks like on the W126, and it's quite a bit different from the one that goes in the old station wing. Same principle, but this is a little bit different design. I'm not going to change these, by the way. The car has 102,000 miles on it. There's no wetness, no evidence at all that these are leaking. So at this point, I'm only going to change the two accumulators, or what some people call the nitrogen spheres, that are located right under here. We're going to get those changed, and when I get them off the car, it'll be interesting to see how bad they are inside. Remember, if you have an SLS system, and you get this really rough kind of buckboard ride, we're not talking about a bouncy ride. We're talking about an abrupt buckboard ride in almost every case, these are the culprit. These are the number one part that wear out. In fact, these can wear out at 60 or 70,000 miles, depending upon how the car is driven and how often it is driven. So this is a maintenance replacement item, just like shock absorbers. Don't expect that if you have a car with SLS, that these are gonna last forever. All right, I'm gonna go to work. I'm not gonna film the whole procedure on this because it's very similar to the station wagons. I've already filmed a complete step-by-step -step, you know, video on how to replace these. So I'm just gonna hit you with some highlights, show you some going back on, and particularly we'll get them on the bench and see how they look once they're off the car. We got the right side off and I could tell right away when we loosened up the fittings to the hard line and to the flexible hose that we were getting so much fluid coming out of this accumulator that I knew it was shot. I mean, that's, that's the first clue. Look at how much fluid came out of this accumulator. If the accumulator is good, you're only going to get a couple tablespoons of fluid out of the accumulator. I'm going to show the reason why here in a second. The other indication is how dark and dirty this fluid is. I've learned that if your accumulator diaphragms are ruptured, they tend to spill off a lot of kind of black spots of crud of course, it's going to go up and get in the filter, you know, up at the reservoir in the engine compartment. But look at here, I drained some of that fluid onto this uh, shop towel and you can see all these black particles. I think that all comes from a ruptured and deteriorating diaphragm inside this accumulator. Of course, all the nitrogen gas is long gone. <laughs> so now the other test would be to use some sort of blunt instrument you don't want to be sticking anything in here that's sharp, so I'm just going to use this little wood stir stick. Okay, I'm going to take the new accumulator that we're going to put on the car, and I'm going to push the stick in until it hits the diaphragm. Okay, ready? Look at that. Okay, there it is. See that? About an inch and a quarter. It went in, and I can feel it hit. You're not going to be able to push in on this, but that's where you should feel the diaphragm, see, it holds the gas in there and it bends out this way. So when you hook everything up in the system and the weight of the car is sitting on the hydraulic strut, the pressure from the hydraulic strut is going to come in here and push back on that nitrogen gas. And of course, as you go down the road and hit a bump, it's the fluid moving back and forth in the accumulator that gives you the shock or a shock absorbing motion in these SLS cars. Okay, now watch this as I put the stick in the old accumulator that we just removed. Look at that. <laughs> all the way to the back. See that? It's going all the way to the back of the ball. Now, where did the diaphragm go? Okay, that's a good question. I think what we're gonna do, I've wanted to do this for the longest time, but we're gonna cut this apart. We're gonna go ahead and slit this thing open I'll come back maybe tomorrow and show you what this looks like inside. It may give you another clue on why these fail. Once again, these are replacement parts, folks. These are like shock absorbers. They do not last forever. Well, you can see now that I've got both off, and of course I've got the, the new ones on. And this other one's no better. Look at this. I take this plastic stick here. Look at that. All the way in. Almost all the way to the back. Let's see. They're about the same. 
Actually, look at that. This one here goes in that far, and this one that we took off the left side goes in that far, so there's about a half inch difference. But once again, the diaphragm is good in there. It's only going to go in about an inch from the face here where the fitting attaches. Of course, if the fitting's on, it may be two inches or a little more that it will go in. Now, I'm sure some of you are thinking, well, how can I test these on the car? And you can. Let's say you just acquired a Mercedes-Benz with SLS. Now, the problem is if you've never ridden in one before, you don't know what's good and you don't know what's bad. I know that's true from reading all these forums. People will say, well, my car bounces too much. And somebody says, what do you mean it bounces too much? And what, are you talking about rough bouncing or soft bouncing? And it goes back and forth because unless you've ridden in a SLS car with good suspension, you don't know what it's going to feel like. So I'm sure some of you are saying, well, Kent, I think it's okay. It kind of feels okay. Let me tell you a little story about this 560 SEC. When I went to look at the car, the owner had owned this for like 18 years, I think. And I'm driving down the road after driving about two miles. I said, you know, I think there's something wrong with your suspension. And he says, what do you mean? I've been driving this car for years. There's nothing wrong with it. I said, no, it's the hydraulic rear suspension. There's something wrong about the rebound rate back there. It doesn't feel quite right. And he wasn't all that convinced that I knew what I was talking about. So that it gives you an idea. If you have one of these cars, you've lived with it a long time, it may slowly deteriorate to the point where you don't even realize it's not riding as it should. So if you have an SLS car, I recommend you test your accumulators. A good time to do that, by the way, is when you do a fluid flush. You know, on my website, I have a complete kit with instructions that will teach you how to properly flush the old fluid out and put new fluid in the SLS hydraulic system. And that's what I'm going to do right now. You know, I've got the new accumulators on. I lost quite a bit of fluid. And I'm not very happy with all that dark fluid that came out of those spheres. So I'm going to go ahead and do a complete fluid flush, even though the fluid in this car is relatively new. It's not that expensive. We're going to get the fluid out. If I have to, I'll replace the filter. But these plastic filters are cleanable if they're not too gummed up. Okay. So now, so if you're doing an SLS flush on your car, I would recommend you go back. You're going to have to jack it up. And I recommend you do a test with the accumulators on the car using a plastic stick like this. I don't recommend you use a wood uh, you know, stir stick like, like I used earlier because it could break off in there. Hell no, then you've got a problem. So get something that won't break. Having it be flexible is real nice too because you're gonna have to get it, get it up in there and get in the hole. But the first thing you need to do before you start taking these hoses off your accumulators, you've got to release the pressure. Or that pressure can fly out in your face. So I recommend you do wear goggles when you get under there and work on the SLS system. And I recommend you use a tank like this. This is my capture tank that I use for brake bleeding. It has the same hose and same fitting that you would have on a brake caliper. You want to go in underneath the rear end, locate the leveling valve, and you'll see a little bleeder fitting just like a brake caliper. You want to attach the end of the hose onto that bleeder fitting, loosen it up, and this is about how much fluid you're going to get out for it to release the pressure. You know, that's maybe a half a cup of fluid, so you're not going to get a lot of fluid out, but you absolutely must release the pressure in the system before you start disconnecting the hoses. Now, you're going to remove the hose, not the metal hard line. You're going to remove the hose. You can leave the fitting on. You can see here we're backing the fitting on the hose all the way off. And once that comes out, you're going to get fluid dripping. So get a pan like this. Now you can see here, look at how much fluid came out of the two accumulators here. So if you've got a lot of fluid running out like this, you don't even need to use the stick. You got it? You know those accumulators are going to be bad. Once it drains out and stops dripping, Go ahead and reach up under the car and stick this in the hole right through that fitting and find out how much it goes in. Now, if the accumulator's good, it's only going to go in 
maybe an inch and a half to two inches, depending upon whether that fitting is sticking out from the end of this flush surface on the accumulator. Follow me? So you're going to put that in there and test. If this goes in, you know, three, four inches like that, just order new accumulators. And you also might want to order accumulators before they fail. You know, if you have a car that you drive a lot and it's, it's you know, your sweetheart, you're, you've got a 300 TD wagon or an SEC or a 16 valve or some other Mercedes with SLS suspension, you know, if you, if you kind of know it's been 60, 70, 80,000 miles since those accumulators have been changed, just change them before they fail. <laughs> because when they fail, guess what? I wish I had a hydraulic strut here that failed due to what I believe were bad accumulators. Now follow me as I explain what's going to happen. You neglect your accumulators and continue to drive the car with them full of hydraulic fluid. There's no give in the struts. The car is going to be going down the road like this. You say, well, I can live with that. Yeah, but guess what happens to the seals in the strut? You see how much pressure is being applied in the seals internally in those struts? So you'll cause the struts to fail. Now on some cars, these are about $100 a piece and struts are $400 a piece. They're a little bit less for the SEC. So you can see the economy there. Don't neglect your accumulators. If you start feeling that buckboard ride or if you're planning to do a flush, go ahead and get under the back car, jack it up. Once again, I think safety here. You're gonna be wearing some face shield or safety goggles and you're definitely gonna bleed the pressure out of the system. Then remove those hoses and do the stick test. How hard is that, okay? The stick test is pretty much a sure thing as to whether or not your cumulator is gonna be okay. So now I'm gonna wrap this job up right now. We're gonna do the flush. I'm gonna push the car out and run it. I have to run the car. I'm gonna have my helper help me here. And we're gonna do a complete fluid flush. And if the weather's okay in the next day or two, I'm gonna take you out for a road test in the 560 SEC. And I think you're gonna be, as pleased as I am at how nice this car rides, because this is a very low mileage, very clean car with very tight suspension. So just fixing the rear end is going to make a huge difference. And also, I mentioned earlier in this video that I'll probably cut one of these balls apart. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm kind of busy, so I may not get this done in the next day or two, but we'll get one of these cut apart. And I'm going to come back and shoot a separate video just on the engineering inside one of these accumulators. So, you have an SLS car, take care of it and it's gonna take care of you.